Okay guys, this is the first video I'm making. Somebody asked me to work on a coil. This is a Model T coil, uh, commonly known as a buzz coil. There's a number of different coils on the bench. This is from a fellow YouTuber. He was doing some work and uh, it's clear that it's got some issues with it. These are similar coils. This one's used in a rail speeder. It was rebuilt in May of 2019 uh, with a new capacitor and the points were set. And then we also have another older version. It's basically a Model T coil. As you can see, it's the same, same coil size, same coil design, a little bit different. Instead of having the button contacts, we have three thumb screws and they're identified T is for the timer, P is for the plug, S is or B is for the battery, excuse me, and, and S is for the spark. So on a Model T coil, this is always the spark and then either one of these is either the common or the power. You can run them either way, they're not uh, dependent on polarity on the primary. Normally this is connected to the timer or the ground side of whatever you're working. This is connected to the battery or the hot side, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the old timers used to tell me that they would reverse the polarity on, on the primary to change the wear patterns of the points so that the tungsten goes back and forth between the two points. I've tried it over the years, it works. Again, these are not polarity sensitive. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to show you what I've done with this coil or what I'm going to do with this coil. This is the first video, like I said, so I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out. We're going to learn together. Uh, I'm going to show you what an existing coil will do that's been rebuilt. We have a six volt sealed lead acid battery. I have a spark plug tester that I use and I use some jumper leads. So let me get set up and then we'll go from there. Okay, I have the first coil set up. Uh, I have my test plug connected to the common side, the ground is. I have the plug side connected to the plug section on the coil. And I have the battery connected. Uh, I'm going to hook up the hot side to the positive post. The negative is, is connected to the ground or the common side. Again, this is a 6 volt sealed lead acid battery. This coil, I changed the condenser in it this summer and readjusted the points. I also cleaned the front up. This coil was a basket case. So here we go. You can see how well it produces a spark. Now it's multiple, multiple sparks. The Model P guys don't particularly like that. The motor car guys do because we, we know that we're getting a good spark. You can also see if you look carefully, let me see if I can zoom in. You can see the points vibrating. Uh, on the top of the coil. I don't know if that's showing up so well, but uh, every now and then you'll see a burst of a spark. It's because the, the voltage generated on the top of that coil, even though it's six volt input, there's residual magnetism, a, a re residual electric electricity, and you'll get voltages reaching up to 300 volts on top of those points as they make and break. So you can see that's what a good coil does. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the one that we're going to repair. So I've I knocked together a um, mount for this coil. Again, these have the button contacts as opposed to these other coils that have the thumb screws. Here's a Model T coil, identical to the one we're looking at. I had soldered on uh, flat-headed machine screws and utilizing thumb nuts. So you can do this with these coils. You just need to be careful. The wires that are connected into the buttons, uh, they'll come loose if you overheat this when you solder these together, just as a warning. Anyway, I've already tried this and I know that it won't jump the spark on a spark tester, which it should. Uh, one of these coils should be able to, to bridge a gap a quarter to three-eighths of an inch with no problem. So I have a brand new uh, D22 spark plug. 
Again, I have this hooked up just like it was before. We've got the plug output, the high tension off the plug. We have the common side going to the negative on the battery and also the ground on the electrode. And then this is the high. And you'll hear the difference as these points make and break. It is making a spark, but it won't jump on the test lead. So I don't know if you can see that. Looks like you, you probably can. You can hear the difference though. It's significantly quieter, but now I'm gonna show you what we're gonna to do to get this thing to work better. I, I don't wanna use the test plug because when this coil sees power, it will make a spark somewhere. Either it's making it outside on a plug or it's making it inside and it's burning up the windings inside. You never wanna run one of these coils without having a spark somewhere. A, a, a gap to allow the spark to jump. A spark will be created every time positive and negative is placed to this. So you do not want to operate one of these coils without a load on it, so to speak. Okay, I've removed that bracket that I made. And uh, normally there's two little nails, one or two nails down here in the bottom to hold this sliding cover over it. They're not in on this one, the other guy took it out. So this just slides off, and you'll see that there's tar in here. And you'll see that it's, it's alligatored. But what's really interesting is that this area of the tar, you can see, has gotten some melt to it. Um, and that's a sign that the capacitor inside of this has gotten hot. And it's remelted the tar. Uh, you can see evidence of the tar having melted and kind of oozed a little bit. And these capacitors are old. They're uh, paper with foil and um, they leak. They will, they will allow the voltage to run through it. They almost become a resistor and um, they won't help generate the plug, the spark at the plug. Um, so as a result, that's the, usually the main problem with these coils. The other thing is these points aren't adjusted properly. That's another big, big problem with these points um, on these coils. That's way too much of a gap. You want 30 thousandths gap up there. And on this upper bridge, there needs to be a gap between the, the, the movable leaf on the bridge uh, and the point, and there's none. There is no, no gap there. So we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna dig out this tar and show you what this looks like. Uh, I believe I have a line drawing let me get that a second and uh, I'll show you what it looks like inside one of these coils. Okay, we're back. Um, I pulled up this line drawing. Here's what we're looking at. Coils oriented the same way. This is not my line drawing. You can see that you have the primary and secondary windings in here. And then the, the condenser is on this side. Here's the points at the top. Our job right now is to remove the tar out of here. I'm not gonna bore you watching me dig out tar. You just need to be careful. There should be a glass plate, a piece of glass along this side that separates the condenser from the windings. Once I dig it out, we'll see it together if it's there. Okay, well, some interesting things have transpired. Biggest one is that somebody had been in here at one point, dug out the old full length capacitor and the piece of glass that was in here. And I found this little capacitor sitting in the bottom. How it was hooked up, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, there's a wire coming off the back side of the movable point, but it dives down underneath the tar. Electrically, it's connected down here to the bottom, which is where it's supposed to be but I don't exactly know how this capacitor actually was hooked up. There was a plate in the bottom of this, a little tiny piece of metal and paper um, that disintegrated, it sat right in this location. So I was expecting, if somebody had been in here, I was expecting to find one of these wax capacitors at least this size. Uh, they're 0.47 microfarads at 400, but those, again, these are old wax paper capacitors. Okay, well, about an hour has gone by since I started this video, and I didn't show you digging out the capacitor. I did put in 
one of these uh, 400 volt 0.47 microfarad capacitors. Those are what the Model T guys use and uh, they have a differential uh, difference in voltage over differential in time and it's 1700 volts per microsecond. And that allows the capacitor to work at its maximum capacity uh, and then it allows the coil in turn to generate a spark uh, much better and much hotter. Now, when I do these coils, I'm doing them for two cycle engines, motor car engines, and they run top end around 1800 RPM. So I've been doing them for almost 10 years now. I've had no problems with them. Uh, they've changed the capacitors, Model T guys have. But let me show you what I've done. I pulled the points off, cleaned them, put them back on, reset them. I reset it so that there's 30 thousandths clearance when this point, the movable point, is down. Uh, 30 thousandths clearance between the movable point, again, this movable point, and the fixed bridge point here on the top. Also, I have uh, this tool that I purchased and that tool is used on the back end of the bridge to bend the bridge down to be able to provide a little bit of clearance on that up, upper point. You can see that that upper point moves slightly. A lot of guys like to fool with this nut and that nut is not how you adjust the coil. That nut is merely to bring the bridge down to give you this 30 thousandths gap uh, between the two points. Some guys measure the 30 thousandths on the bottom side of this movable point and the top of the iron core. Uh, the Model T manual says you should do it with this, with the mo movable point down and it should be between the two points. And that's the way I like to set them. That also allows, when this thing is moving back and forth, it allows, you can see that upper leaf moving slightly and it allows for the coil to soak just a little bit more electricity to increase the charge and then the charge when these break then the charge is fired creates a spark. I'm going to show you what this coil looks like now as far as generating a spark. You remember that kind of faint hiss and it did it did create a spark but on a much smaller plug. Here we're on a test plug and you can hear it now. It's obviously a much brighter spark. It's, it's solid and hot going right into the ground. Um, and then you come back over onto the coil and you see very, very little, just a faint amount of, of uh, arcing between the two points. I've said enough of these by sound that that sound is about right. should be drawing about an amp, maybe an amp and a quarter. Um, if you're running it off of a, again, this is on a 6 volt battery. That's a 6 volt sealed lead acid battery. So at 6 volts, this is the this is the spark that you're getting at 6 volts. So I put the D21 back in line. The test plug's out of the way. Here's this adjustment tool. We're going to hook this back up. And you can see the great spark that we're getting now off of this, off this coil with the D21. Again, this is only 6 volts. It's only hooked up with some clip leads and a homemade kind of jig, jig just to be able to run this kind of coil. I personally don't like these button kind of coils for stationary service. I know why Model T used them, why Ford used them in the Model T's, but for the work that we do, I'm, I'm really convinced that the thumb screws are the best way to go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure some of you are going to go, well, I would have liked to have seen what you did on the inside. Uh, let me take a moment, and I'm going to disconnect this, and I'm going to open up the top of the coil so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so I've slid the top of the coil off. There it is. I had just poured tar in here maybe, maybe 10 minutes ago at this point. I melted some tar in a pot and poured it in here. Here's the wiring that comes up. Now, this coil did not have the glass insulator in it. Somebody had been in here, obviously, with this little tiny capacitor. So, I don't know when that was done. I would say it was probably done at least 40 years ago, possibly more. Here's a coil. Here's a Model T coil that I've actually started working on. 
This is for another guy. You can see the glass insulator that would have been here. And then there's a wood block down in here. And you've got, you've got where the capacitor was. And then these are the, this is the actual end of the capacitor, both of these. I've clipped them off. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to fixing this one, but you can see how it's all set up. And here's the, here's the uh, coil itself, the, the uh, magnet, the electromagnet in here, and then the, the iron core coming up. And you can see it's the same deal. Uh, and there's that, that bridge again, that bridge adjustment. This, like I said, this, this coil will probably made to, be made to work uh, probably this spring. So uh, you can see though that this coil doesn't, it has, while it's old and the um, tar is cracked, it doesn't appear to be that it's gotten hot. You can only see where it got hot by the pock marks over in this location, which is where this capacitor was. So I knew it had gotten hot. This coil, on the other hand, it showed pock marks all around it. So now it's still warm from me pouring in that tar, but uh, uh, this is just a very interesting arrangement, very odd. Uh, the capacitor and the capacitor looks like this. This capacitor sits down in the, down inside. The um, leads are separated from each other. You can see I'm still I can still move tar around in there. Uh, and then this cover just slides on and off. So anyway, that's about it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this first video. Uh, I will try and make another one in the future. Uh, when it's a little bit warmer, it's the end of January here in Pennsylvania. It's not exactly the warmest, and it's not exactly the best time to be making a video. Um, so that's it for now. Bye, guys.